Um, this is a 65-year-old male with a history of obstructing CA transverse colon with an extended right hemicolectomy done in uh, May of this year. Um, he declined um, post-op chemotherapy. He then presented uh, in November this year with malignant biliary obstruction with a CT showing um, a suprapancreatic lymph node causing upstream um, dilation. And a ERCP was done showing a 3 centimeter stricture at distal CBD and a plastic stent was inserted. Repeated ERCP later uh, that week sh uh, changed it to a partial covered um, self-expanding metallic stent. She he was then readmitted in December this um, earlier this month for acute cholangitis and our ERCP showed um, a blocked uh, stent with food residue on the distal part of the stent and a tumor in growth above the proximal flange causing upstream um, biliary obstruction um, and uh, um, attempted cannulation across the tumor but failed um, insertion of plastic stent. So these are a few of the images. Um, and today he will be, uh, d we will be doing an EOS-guided hepatico-gastrostomy for this patient. OK, great. So uh, do you, can you see the EOS image? Uh, not yet. OK, so let's put on the EOS image. Yes, we can see that now. OK, so uh, we're looking at the left lobe here. We're just under the uh, uh, gastroesophageal junction, Look at looking at uh, uh, the B2 segment. And uh, let me look up some. Uh, this is the uh, Doppler on. And we can see a uh, mildly dilated left intrahepatic duct. So it is about 3.5 to 4 millimeter. So it is, uh, it's not that dilated. So that was, uh, we were not impressed, but that's the only axis we have uh, in this patient. Uh, the distance of this uh, duct to the surface of the liver is, uh, is good. So it's about one and a half centimeter. We like it to be within three centimeters, so that's good. We don't have large, uh, Vessels in the way, there are vessels always in this area that run with the duct, of course, but, uh, but I think it's acceptable. So, um, so the mildly dilated duct in a jaundiced patient. Um, and we looked around for other methods of drainage. That was the only route. So we're going to go ahead. Uh, when you're scanning through, sorry, when you're scanning through the uh, uh, stomach, uh, sorry, the abdomen, I can see a lot of ascites. Does it uh, border your choice? Yeah, so uh, this patient has uh, some ascites. There is no ascites in the way. Uh, so when, when the ascites is mild, I think uh, this procedure is acceptable. When it is a large, uncontrollable ascites, then, uh, then it is not. Definitely, we're going to give uh, antibiotics. Um, so there are a lot of challenges here, uh, obviously. Um, the main, main thing really will be the uh, mildly dilated uh, segment. So also what we will know, what we know here is that it may be hard to get a metal stent into that duct. So we are going to have a plastic seven French stent uh, ready uh, in case we uh, need it. And um, <coughs> do you have the fluoroscopy image? Yes. <coughs> so if we can put fluoroscopy on for a second. Let me know when you have it. Uh, we have a very small one. Okay, so uh, we see here the EOS scope is uh, just under the G junction, and we want the scope to be looking towards the hilum. So this is important, because if we follow that duct, I can follow it that way and that way, but if we want to drain it like this, for example, if you look at the scope, now it's pointing uh, opposite to the hilum, so we don't want that. So looking at fluoroscopy for optim optimizing position is, uh, is important. And knowing also that you're accessing uh, the lobe, the intrahepatic from the stomach, not from the esophagus, is also important. So, uh, so we're using a 19 gauge needle. So you are going to try to go through the S2 segment or SV segment? S2. So this is uh, two. Um, okay. This was the optimal uh, position here. And if, do you have a microphone? Okay. So we're going to get to that duct. So of course it's small, so you have to be careful here. OK, 
Okay. And Can you hear me? Uh, do you guys have a fluoroscopy? Uh, we have a good and uh, US wheel. Okay, so if we can yeah. if we can put some fluoroscopy <laughs> on here. Okay. Okay. And then if we can get some saline and then get a wire. So What's here with respiration and using? a small duct, the needle can always uh, come out. So, yeah, so Okay, so if you can help me put a wire in please here. We're using a an 025 Visiglide 2 with an angle tip. So here's the wire. Just gonna optimize the position before we exchange. This is great there. So we're down into the uh, duodenum actually. Okay, so we are going now to exchange uh, the wire and we're gonna get a four millimeter hurricane. Yep, go ahead. So we're going to exchange on the fluoroscopy. So here I'm always, uh, my hand is on the suction constantly. We don't want to insufflate. I want to maintain stable position. So one thing that can happen if your assistant is over pushing the wire, then the wire is going to coil between the, sto the scope and the stomach wall and it can coil out. So uh, very essential. Uh, to uh, to work together here. Okay, so we stop here. After this, we're gonna put the cap over the wire so that we can uh, just see better. So um, so here, so the three steps usually are access, dilation, and stent placement. So this uh, access is uh, we're good now. So second is uh, is dilation of the track. Um, so I'm, I'm going to try to avoid the use of cautery here. Uh, you know, here we, you guys have the six French cystitome. We don't have it in the U.S., so we got used to working without a uh, cystitome. Cystitome is, uh, of course, goes over the wire, um, and, um, and it's, a, it's a good uh, technique to use. There have been some studies from your center that cautery increases uh, uh, the risk, but that was needle knife. Yeah, uh, not, not not the system. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, our center is uh, uh, studied about uh, the cautery system. The uh, hard, uh, needle knife is uh, sometimes is uh, on advantage uh, direction, so it is uh, somewhat risky. But system is just coaxial. Yes. But uh, I think the hepatogastrostomy when we are performing hepatogastrostomy, the the tissue is very soft, so the we don't usually don't use the uh, hard, hard uh, cautery system. The yep. Professor Kasab is uh, try to do the just the fistula tract dilatation with the hurricane balloon. Um, so here a couple of important points, which is very essential for endoscopic interventional EUS. So uh, you have the EUS image still, and you can see the wire. So we want to insert now the balloon into the intrahepatics over the wire under EOS guidance. So that's our puncture angle with the 19 gauge. As long as we maintain that, we should be able to access it bluntly with a balloon without needing a uh, cautery. So the other thing is we're, go we're going to dilate that track to four millimeter. So we don't want to be waiting five minutes for the stent while the, there is biliary leakage. So before we do anything, we're going to ask, uh, look at the stents and see what's available. Yeah, it's I think so. The other option we have is like the six millimeter geoborsa. Okay, perfect. Yeah, so um, I've never used it, but uh, so this is a six millimeter, 10 centimeter. Yep. Uh, half of it is uncovered no, and one quarter, uh, one quarter is one uncovered. Quarter quarter. Perfect, perfect. And okay. They have a marking in the okay. okay, good. So uh, do you have the uh, EUS image? Uh, so you're going to need both the EUS and the fluoroscopy image? Yes, we have. Okay, good. So. Uh, so let's see how this is going to go and see bluntly if the balloon... 
So this is so now, so, so we, when we maintain the, uh, the wire uh, under AUS, so it went bluntly without using any, uh, any card. So we're going to uh, open the stand, have it ready, and we're going to start uh, dilating here, please. Uh, let's go to four. I'm gonna just going to dilate the entire track. Can we have a little bit of uh, fluoroscopy towards our side uh, so that we can see more scope? Okay, that's excellent. Okay, let's go to four millimeter, please. You have contrast in it? Okay. Yep. Okay, so dilate and, and deflate right away. You don't need to, yep. So what's the difference between a six French systotome and your hurricane balloon? Which one? So I'm just not using any cautery. That's that's basically it. I see. Okay, let's redilate, please. Dilate again. So you are afraid of bleeding. That's why you do not use the cautery. Sorry, can you? Re yeah. So s some uh, th risk by, uh, of bleeding, but that's really the needle knife. But if you can't, if you don't need cautery, why use it? Uh, if we can go with a blunt balloon and it uh, facilitates stent placement in, in an easy way. So we dilate uh, to four millimeter, and we're putting a six millimeter stent, so that should tampon at it, and we don't really see biliary leakage. Uh, let's dilate, please. So here I like to go fast to avoid any uh, bile leakage. Is that good? Oh, okay, uh, balloon down. Okay, we're gonna use fluoro here and exchange, and we're gonna get the stent now. So this is a uh, short wire, so I'll, I'll do it. So a uh, short wire system, the last 15 centimeter, uh, we have to exchange ourselves, so I'll just do it like that. And then we uh, get the stent. So this is, the, again, a 10 centimeter uh, stent that has uh, a uncovered part that's going to be on the inside, so towards the hilum, so it avoids obstruction of any biliary radicals. And the covered part will be uh, between the stomach and the liver and on the stomach side to avoid any leakage. And it's 6 millimeter in diameter. That should fit. So I'm on EOS, I'm keeping the uh, wire view, and we're going to go with uh, fluoroscopy here, and uh, let's uh, just keep the tension going on fluoroscopy. Yep, that's good, that's good. Okay, okay so now we're going to open and just give me some tension here, and stent will go nicely, excellent. Okay, so let's, uh, so here now I'm gonna, uh, can we, uh, can I have my endoscopic image, please? Endoscopy, endoscopy. Okay, good, so uh, gonna, here we go. So very important here, uh, this is a long stent, 10 centimeter stent, so not an issue. But uh, generally, we need about three centimeter of stent in the stomach side. You know, the, there's, with respiration, the liver and the stomach move away from each other. And there are some deaths that have been reported from intraperitoneal migration of these stents. So the uncovered part will help anchor it within uh, the intrahepatics, but also leaving adequate stain length in the stomach avoids uh, this issue. So let's, uh, let's start deploying here, please. So this stent, I assume, has an endoscopic marker. OK, go ahead. Sorry? Yep, you can go. You can go. You can go, 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 go. Yeah, but that's the end of the stent here. Stop, stop, stop. 
Okay. Okay, go ahead. Hold on. Hold on, hold on. Hold on, hold on. Hold on, like stop. <laughs> yeah, we don't want that. Uh. Okay, go ahead. Hold on, hold on. Okay, continue. Okay, so almost see the end of the stand. Continue. Okay. Okay. Good. Hold on a second. So we can unresheat everything here. Okay, so that's it. Yeah. We're just gonna remove everything. Good. Professor Kasab, uh, the st the direction of the uh, fractional part of the lumen is uh, uh, square axial to the esophageal. Yeah. So I'll just I just yeah. push it down. Yeah, yeah. We'll just push it down to the esophagus, and then and then we are we are done. So here, if we can retroflex here. So if we can have the endoscopic, uh is that the OGJ junction? Yeah, it's un under the under the squamocolumnar junction. So that's good. This is how you access B two, just from under the uh, columnar from the squamocolumnar junction. Okay, so that looks uh, that looks pretty good, and we we, have, we can see it right away.